If you're an adventurer, you know the anxiety that comes with running out of water in the middle of a tour. The last thing you want is dehydration when you're miles away from home. Fontus is a self-filling water bottle that allows you to plan your adventures without having to worry about heavy water loads or where to find the next river or the next gas station. So, I was debunking this uh, self-filling water bottle thing which uh, runs on sort of Peltier effect devices and then thought suddenly occurs to me I've actually got a load of Peltier devices and some various heat sinks of one sort or another. They're actually about the right size. Um, so I can make one of these self-filling water bottles myself to see what the actual efficiency of these sorts of things is going to be. I can completely destroy it thermodynamically, but I thought it might be fun just to actually make one. So what a Peltier effect device does is you pass, um, you put a voltage across it, pass current through it, one side gets hot, one side gets cold. It takes your energy to do it, of course, and then you use that cold to either just run an electric fridge or something, or to, um, say, condense water in this case. So I will also need someone to move air. So I've got a fan to help me pump stuff through. Everything here is 12 volts. These are like 12 volt Peltier devices, fans, a computer fan. So this one's also 12 volts. Oh, that's a nice heat sink. That is beautiful. Whatever, we'll see. So the airflow is going to do two things. First of all, it's going to take the heat away from the hot side of the Peltier device. And then on the cool side, it's actually going to pass air over to, um, so you, you get more air that goes through, touches the cold surface, can potentially condense more water. So the heat sinks obviously need um, this whatever heat sink compound. Okay, so that's what I settled on after a little uh, tinkering. So I've got a heat sink here. This is going to take all the heat away from this side of the Peltier device. That means that this side's going to get cold. The initial way I had it was one heat sink on both sides, which works. It's, it's actually a fairly efficient way of getting the heat out or getting the cold out, as it were. Um, but the problem is that whilst it takes a lot of the cold away, it's not really concentrated. It never gets below about 10 degrees or so, which is just not enough to condense the water out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run it straight. So this will get down to sort of freezing type temperatures when I run this. Okay, so the um, way I'm going to have this is that's going to be tied up like that. Um, I'm going to pass uh, I've got 12 volts there. It's going to take uh, three or four amps, which means I'm running this is about 40 watts, um, which is more than they'll be able to do on their, their solar panel. There we go. We're taking uh, about three amps on and what you'll find is, right, so I mean, we're already down to sort of freezing type temperatures on the front side, which means the heat's going to be screaming off the back. Uh, it's, it's up to about 24 degrees. Uh, it'll struggle to hold minus 5, I can tell you that. Um, it can only really hold minus 5 if you can dump all of the heat off the back. You can dump all of the heat off the back when it's first turned on. Once it gets up to temperature, it'll get progressively harder to lose that heat. Okay, so I'm going to start the stopwatch there. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit here. So already you can see condensation on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it for about five minutes and see roughly, now run it for 10, let's run it for 10 minutes and see how much water we can condense on a Peltier type device with a reasonable amount of power run for about 10 minutes. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Um, you can see that it, 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 it's churning out the heat on, on the back here. This is pumping the heat out like crazy. Let's see if we can actually get a temperature bead on that. Uh, so it's, it's 30-ish degrees and it gets very hot on the interface. It goes up to about 70 or 80. And if I now take a look at it on the other side, you can see that 
Um, it says eight degrees, but it's it's colder than that. It says nine. And now let's let's try the um, the other infrared device. Actually, now that says it's it's about it's about seven. But I'm taking forty watts to do this, so it's been running for three minutes so far. I just about see the condensation. I might have a drop if I'm lucky after three minutes at 12 volts and about three amps. Focus, focus on this. There we go, that's good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to absorb the water off the front here into this tissue. Then I'm going to wet it. And that will tell us how much water we've condensed. The answer is about 50 milligrams. No, 60 milligrams. So that's about three drops of water. I got three drops of water in 10 minutes. <laughs> anyway, so I just thought that might be a quite nice little demo seeing because I have all the principal components that they have in their device. You know, the heat sink, the Peltier device, the power supply. Eh, the fan. I know roughly how much power I'm using and I can get an estimate of how much water they could condense in their water bottle that is their self-filling water bottle in a day. And the answer is about a shot glass full. You know, if it's three drops in 10 minutes, it's um, times by six, 18, 20 drops in an hour, call it a milliliter per hour, 20 hours, 20 milliliters. It's about enough to fill a shot glass full. So there we go, shot glass and 20 milliliters, okay? So this is realistically how much their never, never emptying bottle will likely produce in one day. Anyway, I'm gonna make a proper video on this in about a day or so. So, something to look forward to. Thank <laughs> you.